courtside with 24,000 looking on. Louisville has only won twice in Lexington, 1916 and 1989. Kentucky ranked fourth in the country, six and one on the season. And the Wildcats control with Anthony Epps. Louisville seven and three, ranked 25th. You see a lot of screening early, Jim, with this man-to-man -man defense by Louisville. Walker follows. And Juan Walker, the sophomore from Chicago, opens the game. Jim, their leading scorer now. You knew somebody was going to have to be, but he's elevated himself in a hurry coming off that great performance in last year's SEC tournament. Inside, Samaki Walker, no whistle. Got fouled twice on the play, Jim. Wheat comes around to make the steal. We pick up the action one minute into the game. Kentucky scoring inside on Antoine Walker's follow-up basket. Jim Nance and Billy Packer at Rupp Arena for Louisville and Kentucky. A big mistake by McCarty, had an on a switch. We got caught with Walker, giving up about seven inches, Jim, and they couldn't hit the low post. Dangerous pass picked off by McCarty, and Louisville turns it right back over. And if you're Louisville, you want to occupy that ball. It's so important. Mercer misfiring a three and a whistle against Kentucky. Louisville has had Two trips on the offensive end. This is actually going against the Cardinals. They had it inside twice and failed to score with Samaki Walker. The starting lineups, Kaiser, Sims, Walker, Rogers, and Wheat for Louisville, Walker, Mercer, and McCarty, along with Delk and Epps for Kentucky. That foul was called on Dewan Wheat, and there's a traveling violation against Kentucky. So three straight empty trips for Kentucky. There's a case, Jim Samaki Walker last year with those 11 huge blocks in the win over Kentucky. Kind of made Walker think about it a little bit. And even though there was no shot taken, you might as well give him credit for a block because it created the walk. Here's Walker. He had a triple-double in that game last year. Alvin Sims driving and scoring and going to the line. He has had really quite a remarkable transformation into a score this year for Louisville. But Jim, he understands his role right now. He knows he's got a score, a powerful body, drives on the inside, shooting right at 55% on the year. Terrific job on his part in a ball club that has been decimated both by injuries and academic uh, problems. McCarty on the foul. Louisville takes a 3-2 lead. Louisville 7-3 and three on the year. And Louisville picks up full court a little bit just to change the pace. Epps in traffic, kicks it back out. Cody dealt three. Look at Wheat underneath for the rebound. Off balance shot that time by Delt. Juan Wheat had 23 in last season's victory over Kentucky. And Sims dribbled it off his own knee. Kentucky with Epps unable to handle it. That last touch, Rogers, and then the backboard. It should be Kentucky basketball. Jim, there was a fast break where you've got the ball in Epps' hands. Nobody filled any lanes. They were all clogged together. Therefore, there was no passing angle for Epps to make the play. Now, I realize it got away from him, but his teammates didn't help on, the, on that uh, fast-breaking opportunity. Kentucky 6-1. Its only loss was to UMass by 10, where Marcus Camby had 32. There's Delk missing again. Walker with the board. But Kentucky with impressive wins over Maryland, Georgia Tech, and Indiana. Wheat. That hit the uh, in line, out of bounds, and Kentucky ball. Well, Wheat really explodes off of that dribble, doesn't he? One of the top point guards in the country. Kenny Crum on the official over there saying, my guys have been hit twice on, on shots. Doesn't look like he's gaining any attention. Kentucky hasn't scored on its last five possessions. And here's Walker. And Kentucky. Nice, nice altering of the shot that time by Samaki Walker on an Antoine Walker. They really respect his shot-blocking ability. 
We keep talking about last year's game. It was actually earlier this year. It was on January the 1st, New Year's Day, these two played at Freedom Hall. Louisville won at 88-86, holding Kentucky to 34% shooting. And that stopped a four-year winning streak for the Wildcats in this series. Two key players in that game, Roger Groves, no longer at Kentucky. Jason Osborne, not eligible to play for Louisville. They had options. Beautiful feed inside. Great passing, first to the corner to Sims. Sims then underneath to Samaki Walker. So far, Kentucky's press has done nothing to Louisville at all. Probably because of Wheat. There's another switch by Wheat. He gets stuck on a big man. Turner, freshman in. Air ball. Wheat ahead. Good pull up. Sims gets it back out. Sims looking to penetrate Jim with the dribble every time he touches the ball. Walker doubled up. Kaiser cross court. Nice ball handling. Kaiser, he can shoot the three. And Walker over the back. Good block out by McCarty. Can't afford for him to get in foul trouble, Billy. No, they have no place to go at all. See Sims taking it on inside. Steps down nice and low to get that ball on the, on the ground. It's the Maki Walker. Excellent finish. Derek Anderson and Mark Pope have come into the Kentucky lineup. Pope number 41 and Derek Anderson 23. No drop off in talent there at all. One formerly the Pac-10 freshman of the year and one formerly all Big Ten freshmen. So uh, two transfers that uh, can really play. Example. Yep. Delk, he's missed two from three-point land. And they say Rogers was the last man to touch that one. And there, Tick Rogers did a good job blocking out on Walker, but no foul called over the back. Denny Crum uh, up loud and often here, and rightfully so. Hope. Kentucky's this seven straight, and it stops there. Walker has both baskets for Kentucky on follow-up shots. Uh, Kaiser's given up about three inches right there, and plus Walker, a much better leaper. On the block. Probably not a good idea. You know Kaiser's not going to be able to post up against those bigger guys from Kentucky. Kaiser reached in and stole it. But that is there to retrieve it for Kentucky. Dishes, Walker, three. definitely not hitting the outside shots and you go down inside they've got a lot of switch, switching it in here so they've got a lot of mismatches inside but only two baskets on offensive rebound buckets from Antoine Walker five minutes and change into this game five four Louisville down to six seconds Peterson driving outside Rogers called for the hand check Nice break that time for Kentucky. Anderson really has the ability to take a man one-on-one. On one. Kentucky only 2 of 11 from the field, and the Cardinals with a one-point edge early. Welcome back to Rupp Arena. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. And Billy, uh, we talk about great rivalries. There was one time, a 26-year stretch where these two didn't play, and another 24-year hiatus during this rivalry. But now they play every year, and it's one we treasure to be a part of. Well, it really is something, Jim. Of course, I was honored to be there in Knoxville when they resumed the series. Of course, it was an NCAA tournament game, went into overtime. And, Jim, one of the things unusual about that, that might have been the game when Kentucky and Louisville were both at their best. You know, we've had a lot of sort of series... Where, where they haven't been, but it didn't stop the people from coming out. It's great basketball territory here. Kentucky goes zone for the first time, 2-3. Damian Dantzler, number 50, into the Louisville lineup. Now Louisville, a pretty good outside shooting team. They can surround the zone with, in the case right now, three good perimeter shooters. Of course, this man right here with the ball, the best Louisville's ever had. Throws up an air ball. That's the second one, too. 
from Weeks. He can get a better shot than that, particularly against his own. Delton. They have missed all seven from three-point land. Walker had it stripped away by Anderson. And there's the first rejection of the game for Walker after he rang up 11 last year against Kentucky. Dance. Well, got him couple. on the arm. Now, one of the things that Louisville has got to do, Jim, they're in a, in a situation right here where so far it's a low-scoring game, but you and I both know Kentucky can go on incredible runs with this team. They did it against Massachusetts. They did it against a, a Murray State. They have that ability, so you got to be careful, and you, they allow you to sleep thinking that you can can run with them. That's not the key for Louisville today. I mean, for Louisville today against them. Two for Dantzler. And I think that's what Denny Crum is telling the ball club right now. You know, unless it's really there on the break, they don't need that. Bring it back out. Kentucky last year, 9 for 27 for 3 against uh, Louisville. And they started basically the same way again today. Not shooting off from the outside and not taking advantage of the inside height. For seven from three-point range. Walker. That's his second block. Back to Dell. Sims got a piece of it that time. Anderson follows. McCarty's turn. Hope. Is that the second one for Samaki Walker? A touch foul. A big one. He was boxed out, Jim, throughout that entire sequence and never really got in position to go up and grab a rebound, and it gets caught for the touch foul. And he doesn't want to come out of the game. With two. Good job by Kentucky on the boards. Pope, Anderson, McCarty, and Delk all can get up on the boards. Uh, see if they try to go ahead and get Walker down inside with Pope. Try to pick up that third foul on him. Anderson. Sims pulls it away at last. Boy, did Kentucky have chances on that trip. Yeah. Two out of 17 now, Billy, from the field. To stay in the zone. He's down inside. Pope really on Backward violation, but that ball was touched by Kentucky and hit off the rim. Down inside, wrap around on Pope. Pope really battling, of course. Rick Patino in a nice position, size-wise, to go ahead and occupy a Samaki Walker with a number of players. Pope will come out right now. Antoine Walker goes back in, so he can swap some fouls there. And uh, coming in for Louisville is Bozak Smith. Samaki Walker is going to come out because what Denny Crum, and this is a wise move on his part, probably senses it. Samaki Walker can't afford to pick up his third this early. And being a little bit tired with fresh guys going against him, that's when you pick up one of those lazy fouls. Bozak Smith is 6'8". He did start three games earlier this year when Walker was uh, ineligible for the first two games. And missed the game also with an ankle sprain. There's a foul on McCarty. Sims so strong taking the ball to the hoop. Powerful legs. Doesn't mind taking in there. Of course, we know he's a good leaper as well. So when he goes in, he just powers his way through. And it's the second on McCarty. So two on Pope, two on McCarty, two on Walker for Louisville. Two shot situation. What's uh reestablish for the folks what Louisville's been through. It's quite an embattled program at the moment. Jason Osborne, a starter, ineligible, academically ineligible, and just missed out. Alex Sanders as well. One of the assistant coaches, Larry Gay, has been temporarily suspended with pay until the university has completed an internal review of matters. Samaki Walker has been investigated for uh, a missed two games. Yep, missed two games as a result of that. And they lost Eric Johnson with a knee injury, so clubs really have their problems compared to what Denny Crum expected to put on the floor this year. Oh, nice fake by Anderson. They can't, can't hit. find it. 
Jeff Shepard, number 15, has come into the Wildcat lineup. Inside Smith. Sims, good piece of drive and oh, <laughs> tips it in. Well, he's left-handed, Jim, and luckily he was. He got there just in time. There's McCarty going to the floor. McCarty knocked Bozak Smith to the floor. Oh, and they're going to call walking. Now, there was a case where, in my estimation, the overruling official missed it completely. McCarty knocked Smith to the floor. Should have been called. Then, without question, Smith comes back. There, that should have been called. Now you're going to see the replay. Smith gets back up without question. Fouls McCarty here. No call. They call traveling instead. Louisville ball with the lead. Temple upset Kansas last night. A week ago, they beat Villanova when it was ranked second. Memphis is unbeaten. Georgia Tech lost this week to Mount St. Mary's. How about Temple, though? Three and four on the year, but they beat a one and a two. And Jim, let's we see Memphis undefeated. Another team in the great USA Conference undefeated. That's Cincinnati, and they blew Temple out up in Cleveland on a neutral floor. So sandwiched in between those two knockoffs of number of one and two teams. Cincinnati comes in there and shows their strength. Had a great game against California this week as well. The Conference USA pretty well blessed there with two teams that are very, uh, very much in the heat for the number one spot this year. Strong conference. Smith is traveling. Now, Kentucky will get the ball. We're more than nine minutes into this game, and Kentucky has four points. They're only points coming on putback baskets by Antoine Walker and when you take Walker away from the stats the rest of the team is 0 for 14 from the field unbelievable and they've had wide open jumpers there's where they can do something else no, that. that's one to put away with McCarty McCarty the press picks up so one thing Jim when you don't score you don't get a chance to set up your press all of a sudden, now it becomes Kentucky basketball. Get some baskets. Start running. There it is. Mercer. And here's the press right back. We talked about Kentucky run. Well, it took them nine minutes to score the first four. They score the next four in about ten seconds. They ought to pull it back out. It's them short. Not a good idea. They just pull it out and be in a half-court game. Just playing right into this run for Kentucky. A couple of quick shots. Exactly. You hear the mismatches Kentucky presents. Now, Shepard, who can sky with anybody. McCarty, no way to block him out. They're just going to the offensive glass. They didn't do this early in the ballgame. And again, Jim, point out you can't press if you don't score because you never get in a situation to set up. So, Matthew Walker has returned for Louisville with his two fouls. The Louisville D. There was a switch on a back screen. Ties it at 10. Yeah. Mercer on the push. That's all right. Rick Pitino will take that because it created the pressure in this game. He wants a track meet. Illinois way up over California. And Connecticut, another team, Jim, playing just where they've been picking off the last couple of years. Terrific press that they have as well. The party on Sanaki Walker down inside. Walker and X read it just right. Uh, Mercer wanted the lob that time from Epps. The party jumper. That's an eight-point run for Kentucky. Well, uh, McCarty is not supposed to be able to start unless he weighs 230. I think Rick Matino's running those scales. Sims. Patino does not like breakouts against his press. That time, Sims just made a great athletic play over the top of the smaller X. Let's see if we can slow things down and get Louisville back into a half-court game. Walker underneath, no whistle again. He's got to understand they're doubling down on him every time he touches it. He's the guy with the hot hand right now. Shepard. Tipped up. Oh. 
followed by Epps. They're sending five guys to the glass. That could be a technical foul. If he touched him over the line with a man in the possession, officials giving him a warning. Mark Pope returns for Kentucky. McCarty out. Good job by McCarty in there. He really set the stage for getting up on the glass. 14-12, Kentucky. Well, Walker's a tough target to throw the ball in on, isn't he? You have him, Gardner. Yep. Active hands. Matthew Walker was on the line right here in front of us. Well, you talk about having good spacing, Jim, in a half-court offense. In a press, spacing is important as well. And there, nobody came back to the ball, made the passing lane so long, Kentucky's quickness and size able to pick it off. Samaki Walker having to make a play that just wasn't there and was out of bounds. Mercer three. Now shooting under 30% from three is Mercer. On the season. Acrobatically saved it. Cardi eyed that one, didn't he? Foul called on Rogers. Timeout on the floor. Kentucky on a 10-2 run to take a two-point lead. Both teams shooting only 25% from the field. We have not had a three-point basket in this game. And but look at offensive rebounding for Kentucky, 11 to two. Well, Jim Louisville comes into this ball game being out-rebounded by their opponents, even though they've got a 7-2 record. Uh, and they've been out-rebounded by three different teams by double digits. So they really have got problems in that area. And with Walker having uh, two fouls on him right now, he's got to be careful. Kentucky sending everybody to the boards, including Epps, the guard. Charge. No basket. Georgia Tech really manhandled Louisville last Saturday on the boards. Had a 13 rebounding, 13 rebound advantage. We see the ball going inside. Walker just a little bit surprised to be that wide open. Doesn't realize Kaiser's on his hip. Can we talk about these runs? Kentucky had a 32 and 2 run against Mick, against Marshall. And even a club like Massachusetts, they were down 29 to 10, end up high in half time. So they can do it. Out of control, but Walker battles underneath and it's Louisville ball. They just barely beat the 10 count to get that ball past midcourt. Coming up next, the CBS Sports Show, the Northwest Airlines Christmas on Ice. Nancy Kerrigan and Dorothy Hamill get into the spirit in this holiday special. Featuring the music of Aaron Neville and Jim Brickman. That's next on the CBS Sports Show. Kentucky back to that zone. Rick Pitino really on the sidelines. Fired up on his ball players as they come out of the game. He wants that effort. Here's that triple team out of that zone. Smocky Walker's not going to get many open shots down there. DJ Flynn, number 13 in for Louisville. Good ball rotation. Dancer taken away by Mercer. You remember Flynn last year, of course, the key to Louisville's game down the stretch. Hardy. Had to hit the side of the rim. 0 for 11 from side three. Side of the backboard, right? Yep. Beautiful. No look pass. McCarty back. Beautiful slashing move by Mercer. Flynn charge. Jim, I'm really surprised, and, and this is just a mental breakdown, not physical. I mean, Flynn's making an awful lot. There's that great pass inside by Mercer. McCarty puts it away with a good pump fake, but the key to Louisville is to get the ball over half court, relax, and keep this into a slow-paced game. Benny Crump talking to Flynn over there, son of a former Kentucky player. And the more they get seduced into a running game, the more this game will get away from them. Exactly. 
Flynn knocks it out of bounds. You mentioned his father, Mike Flynn, who played here at Kentucky in the mid to late 70s. Right. He's, He's in the final four in 75. You see all these back picks create mismatches inside. He's having a big day. He came off a game uh, earlier this week where he had 12 assists and six steals against Marshall. So very lively again today. Ooh, tough pass. That's where the time to pull it back out now. Step into Kaiser. A pretty good job by Pope. You know Kaiser's a good three-point shooter, so he went right out at him. Took away the three, but Kaiser was patient enough to go up and under. And notice on the switches how they get mismatches inside height blocks. Well, they got one right now. Uh, where Sims has been playing all over the place, but now there's a switch off to Cardi. And Walker with a two fouls, just unable to try to give that one a rejection. 2014 matching the largest lead for the Wildcats. And this lead has been created because Louisville has not been patient. Good steal. Epps having a great first half. Jim. A steal and a basket. Wildcats with their largest lead. Epps has been the leader out here. The guy that most people felt wouldn't get a lot of playing time. They was really regarded as their 11th man yep. at the start of the year. Sims says, hey, don't, don't count us out yet. Boy, that went right over the top of Shepard, who is a great leaper. Walker, Walker that for his third block, and there's the travel on Pope. This is some kind of play by Sims because he knows that Shepard can leap. Look at Shepard going up in the air. Sims goes right over the top of him. Sensational pass. Shepard doesn't have many people, backcourt guys, that can go over him. Got to get the ball in Wheat's hands more against the press. Here he is. Really, in this whole Kentucky run, Wheat hasn't handled it much at all. Walker, another violation. Traveling. Jim, what's happening when the ball comes in to Walker? On the opposite side away from Walker, there needs to be some action because Kentucky is sending everybody from the weak side over to guard him. If two guys would move on the opposite side, they'd be wide open for jump shots, but they're just standing still and watching. Good rebound by Sanaki Walker. Well, he wouldn't need much help to be just devastating inside. Would he? Well, the big body would help him. Sims. He's got to be careful not to hit his head on the rim. Hey, well. Boy, he's going up. Just under four minutes and a half. There's Pope. And Walker secures it. Louisville down eight a moment ago. Can now cut into that lead of two will bring it down to two. Walker bodies all over again, but he scores inside. 22-20 Kentucky. Nice job by Walker. Very smart play to make the move quickly before the double team could come. 22nd timeout called by Kentucky. Well, Billy, the AP Top Ten will be undergoing a, a reshuffle this week with Kansas losing last night. UMass now poised to take over number one. Well, Kansas has got to move down some, Jim, and everybody on their heels right now. It, it looks like you say Kansas coming down, Massachusetts moving up, but you know there's some other guys. Memphis has got to make a move. Mm -hmm. How about Cincinnati's got to come in there and make a move? Arizona. Well, I'll tell you, a lot of people nipping at the heels. Last year, we had six different teams were number one over the course of the year. This year, we'll now have our third. So I would expect that to keep changing. I would like you to counsel me on my uh, AP vote, which I'll be <laughs> turning in uh, tomorrow, as I do every Sunday. What about Temple? They're three and four on the year, yet they've beaten the one, as we and established they earlier. They beat Villanova when it was two. I mean, should you rank them in the top 25? Sub 500 record, but with those two wins, I'm asking for your help. All right, I'll have to think of that. Oh, there's a swing up, and Walker left alone. Antoine Walker with six. Switch inside. 
and nobody picked up Walker. Screeners are going to be off. Delk read it just Beauty. right. What a save. Back to Delk. Three. First time today for Kentucky. And Steele set it up. Careless passing by Louisville. Four set right here. Kentucky finally hits a three on its 12th try of the game. Sweet. Three pointer. Kentucky running. Yep. Delt will shoot two. Good distribution on that play. That time, the Kentucky guys all filled the lane. Remember that break we had earlier in the game where everybody was boxed up together on the inside? That time, good timing, good spacing on the break. Delk uh, in a position to score. Two shots, and they call it intentional? They call it intentional here, Billy. I didn't like that call. Two plus possession. We don't, I never did see the signal for intentional, but here we see it coming down inside. Now why, you know, he's going at the ball. There was a lot of contact, but I think he definitely was going at the ball with Smith. Officials time out. Kentucky has opened up a nine point lead. Coming up at the half, Pinsoil at the half. Andrea Joyce with the latest scores and highlights. Let's look at the only woman head coach of a men's basketball team, Carrie McTiernan of Kingsboro Community College in Brooklyn. That's coming up at the half. Attendance today, Billy, 24,340. That is an all-time Rupp Arena record. Delt two straight right in the same spot. Good out of bounds play, and boy, that intentional foul really hurt Louisville. 12 point lead, largest of the game. Talked about Kentucky runs. This has been the home of Wildcat basketball for 20 years. Since 1976, there's never been a larger crowd than the one assembled today. So on the paper this morning, people up in Ohio where you can scout yeah. tickets had tickets for sale at 275 apiece for this game. Illegal in the state of Kentucky, but not too far away from the state of Ohio. They got to beat the shot clock here. Rogers three pointer in time, but off the mark. Jim Rogers should have been ready to shoot that ball before he caught it. He waited to get himself set. Delt. Three straight baskets for Delt. Two three-pointers and a drive. Louisville in serious problem right now, Jim, after playing a pretty good solid first 15 minutes when they got caught up in the running game. Just a minute to go in the half. Wheat has not been able to get any standstill jumpers. Anderson wanted the travel, instead gets called for the foul. Next Saturday from Austin, North Carolina. And Jeff McInnes against high scoring Reggie Freeman and the Texas Longhorns and Tommy Penders. You think Tommy Penders wants those referees that did the Louisville, Texas game where Louisville went to the line 59 times? <laughs> If Tommy's listening, I'm sure that he uh, probably isn't making that request. You know, those two, Carolina and, and Texas, as you know, opened our season last year right. in a great shootout at the Dean Dome with Carolina prevailing in the last minute. Texas, They'll play again next week here on TV. Now, Texas was down to Louisville 18 to nothing in that ball game before they got untracked. As you can say, getting untracked uh, ever happened. Delk has scored the last 10 points for Kentucky. Make it 12. He's a scorer, isn't he? Yeah. Mm. He's fearless when he goes inside. There's Wheat going long, but when Wheat goes long, you don't have a ball in the back there to handle. He comes back to get it. As of today, Tony Delk has now shot more threes than anyone in Kentucky history. He's made more also. Well, that's the part of the stat you like. 
Yeah, you don't want the <laughs> you want the maid. Exactly. You don't want to be the guy that's taken more. You want to be the guy that's made the most. And Lloyd Oak wisely down 15, going for the last shot. Can we get a jumper? He does. And makes it a three. Much needed. First points of the game for Dewan Wheat, who had 23 last year. And Sims will give Louisville one more possession because the arrow belongs to the Cardinals with 1.2 seconds. Boy, in effort in this first half, Sims and Epps have been the two stars for these respective teams. Both given everything they've got out there, and Denny the Crum going to use his 20-second timeout. timeout. It's a good play. By the way, time's up on the Temple thing. I've decided. I'm, I'm, I'm giving him a vote. He got it. I mean, he beat a one and a two. And are you moving Massachusetts, who's played a schedule that has just been unbelievable, number one, into the number obviously. one spot? Yeah. How about, you know, we, we kind of thought that the Big East was back and the Atlantic 10 maybe come down a little bit this year. But when you start talking about having the number one team in the nation and having a club like Temple doing what they're doing, uh, you know, that league isn't going away. Jackson State, by the way, last night, two and six on the year, defeated LSU in a shocker. We saw earlier the Mount St. Mary's victory over Georgia Tech, so surprises continue to abound in college basketball. Now, final second of the half. And doing a good job is Kentucky keeping the ball out of weak hands. Sims off the mark. Kentucky finishes the half on a 16-4 run. Andrea Joyce will be along with Pennzoil at the half in just a few moments. But the score now, Kentucky 36, Louisville 24. We'll continue after this message and a word from your local station. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Welcome back to Pennzoil at the Half. In this day and age, women are succeeding everywhere and at everything. But how many women in this great land of ours are head coaches of a men's collegiate basketball team? Well, as it turns out, the answer is just one. If he's still guarding you here and you can't get it, where are you going to go? You're going to go right back door on him. I suck. <laughs> I was like, oh, woman. Throw that ball. You're not going to knock him over. He's a big guy. He can handle it. Oh, they got a girl coach or whatever. Upstate, they were saying that. I'm taking him right here. This is what I'm doing. Boom. 25-year-old Carrie McTiernan may not look like your typical trailblazing pioneer, but she is the first woman ever to coach a sanctioned men's collegiate basketball team. And while it came naturally to her from the start, for her players, it took some getting used to. One of the players, one of the guys who was trying out, says, Miss, 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 miss. He's calling, miss, miss, miss. And I'm not turning around. I'm just continuing to walk. And one of the guys says, call her coach, see if she turns around. And as soon as he said, coach, boom, I turn around. Kingsborough Community College may not see the final four anytime soon. It's a small commuter college in Brooklyn. But its basketball team did need a coach. So when the spot opened up, McTiernan, the women's coach, and a former star player at Johns Hopkins got the call. Right away, I said, you know, I absolutely want to do this. And then I hung up the phone, and I said, wait, what did I do? You know, do I want to do this? Do I not? And I always wanted to. I just, I was a little apprehensive about how it would be received. After we got to know her, it really wasn't that big of a deal, the gender issue. She was just coach after the first couple weeks, and she just one of the guys, basically. Well, for one of the guys, she works the other guys pretty hard, as any good coach would. While some may say she's taking one giant step for all womankind, she just sees it as one small step for her team. I'm here to do a job at Kingsborough. If this helps women in the future who can open up some doors for them, that's great, but that's not what my job is. My job is to try and turn King's Rose program around, and that's what I focus on. And she's got quite a ways to go. The team has yet to win under her, but Coach McTiernan is not easily discouraged. She answered the call, she took the job, and now she'll take a win. Right now we're 0-10, but slowly but surely we have been improving, which is the direction you want to go in, but we still haven't found that win yet. Uh, January 3rd we play again, and uh, I feel good about that one. <laughs> It's no wonder Coach McTiernan looks forward to that date. It's her dad's birthday, and she's hoping to celebrate with a W. CBS Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four continues in a moment. Stay with us. CBS 
CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. And, and we are back in New York with uh, more on Pennzoil at the Half as we continue here from our studios. We are giving you the score right now in the game that you are watching, the intrastate rivalry. It is Kentucky leading Louisville 36-24 at halftime. In our other game today, it is UNLV trailing UCLA at halftime. Jim Herrick and his UCLA Bruins traveling to Vegas to face UNLV. UNLV got off to a fast start as Clayton Johnson blocks the shot and then goes end-to-end -end for the dunk. But UCLA comes back. Cameron Dollar with the steal before dishing it to J.R. Henderson for the jam. And once again, they are at halftime in Las Vegas, UCLA leading by 11. Earlier today in a game you saw on CBS, it was number 14, Illinois over Cal, the Fighting Illini at the United Center today in Chicago. Cal trailed by five in the first half after Jelani Gardner takes this long pass and goes in for the reverse layup. But Illinois goes up by 13 after Richard Keene takes this pass from Jerry G and drains the three-pointer. Illinois was in control all afternoon. Iwan Garris takes over, scored 23 points this afternoon, and Illinois improved to 9-0 on the season, 83-69 the final there. Elsewhere today, it's Indiana trailing DePaul by two in the second half. UConn, a big winner today over Fairfield, 86-52. Ray Allen, 17 points for the Huskies, 16 re or six rebounds, rather, and eight assists. And it was Clemson, 66-52 over Miami. St. John's also defeated Fordham today, 66-47, that one in the Bronx. And the undefeated number one ranked and current national champions, Nebraska Cornhuskers, have touched down in Arizona soon to begin their final preparations for the big game. They got the red carpet treatment this afternoon, and they will begin their, uh, their preparations for the big game, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl against the second-ranked Florida Gators. Oh, well, it's unbelievable. Yeah? It's better than the Orange Bowl. Is it really? Yeah. How does it compare to you? What was that, the Orange Bowl compared to this? Well, it's just like a big a lot of people there, but it wasn't no long line where we had to walk down red carpet or anything. And CBS will have that game for you at 8 p.m. Eastern time on January 2nd. It's number one Nebraska versus number two Florida for the national championship. And now on this white Christmas weekend, here are some holiday greetings heartfelt from the hardwood. I like to see smiles on a lot of children's faces this year. For Christmas this year, I want to be able to fall asleep on every airplane I travel on. What a nice big black land cruiser sitting inside my driveway. Uh, the new Mercedes-Benz 600 Series. My Christmas wish would be that everybody has better health and a very happy new year. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride a one or something sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one or something sleigh. Hey! Dashing through the snow. Oh, the physical. Laughing all the way. <laughs> bells are about to ring. Okay, we're done. <laughs> happy holidays and peace to everyone in the world, and let's care for each other a lot more. Merry Christmas! Feliz Navidad! Prettige feestdagen en een gelukkig nieuwjaar. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Merry Christmas to everybody and uh, a very happy and uh, prosperous new year. What a spirited group. Jim and Billy will be back with the second half after this message and a word from your local station. Thanks for watching Pennzoil at the Half. Enjoy the second half. Pennzoil at the Half was sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. We had really two different halves in the first 20 minutes. If you will, after nine minutes, Louisville led 10 to 4, and then Kentucky outscored them 32 to 11 the last 11 minutes. And Tony Delk, a big reason why, Billy, he scored the last 12 points for Kentucky. Well, Jim, Louisville got hung up in the kind of game Kentucky wanted to play. Those first nine minutes, it was all Louisville because they went half court at a time, and that's what they've got to do. Like an example of what happens to you against Kentucky's press. Watching a case here where the pass is going to go long, right over the top of the press. And Sims does an incredible job catching this ball over Epps and then finishing it off. 
sometimes when you make a great play like that going long you still have to remember if that's not there play half court at a time that is exactly what Louisville has to do and of course if you're Kentucky you want to be playing all over the whole court and that's what they did so well in that run three-point field goals uh, remember Kentucky missed its first 11 but Delp made uh, two at the end of the half and the rebounding edge overall, a 10-rebound advantage for Kentucky, 25 to 15. Jimmy, remember when the three-point shot came out uh, and Denny Crum didn't want it at all in the dark run. Now this year, Louisville actually takes more threes per game than does Kentucky, 20 to 17. Rick Pitino trying to cut that down a little bit. That would be a nice move, but he uses the left hand. He's got it up and in. Didn't finish it. Mercer left open. Kaiser's second rebound here in the half. Here comes Sims. He's got the powerful drive. Nobody picked up his dribble. Rick Patino really has to be upset with that. Guy goes 50 feet with the dribble. Uncontested layup. Well, if you will, go back to the end of the first half. That should have, you know what? That actually should have been Louisville's ball. Rick Pitino came out on the floor before the whistle was blown. He was out of the coaching box, and the referees just went ahead and went along with it. But he was on the floor. His players were walking off. Calls a 20-second timeout. Louisville has scored six unanswered going back to the end of uh, into the first half. What else uh, jumps out at you, Billy, with the first half numbers you had a chance to examine well we talk about double digits out being out rebounded by double digits and I mentioned Louisville has had that happen to him three times so far this year in the first half they're being out rebounded 25 to 15 which is exactly double digits and the shooting of course for Kentucky even with the lead woeful outside shooting and you got to believe that's going to improve so Mercer gives over to F three so it's got to improve wide open jump shot for Epps who has had a very solid game Epps now with 11 points and four steals and Louisville with the easy basket walker and you know what made that weak playing half court at a time he forced Kentucky to come after him instead of trying to force it up through Mercer drove and uh, Sims got a piece yeah, of his arm Sims got his wrist should be shooting too. Mercer and in some minds the national high school player of the year last year and his choices came down to Kentucky or Tennessee. Yeah, Jim, that happened today as well. Huh? The football player came down to Kentucky or Tennessee. And Kentucky wins on both. Tim Couch, quarterback. We are in the state of Kentucky, a schoolboy legend, featured in Sports Illustrated, among other national publications, and uh, he has decided to play football here for Coach Bill Curry. I'm really glad to see that for one of the real nice guys in all of sport, Bill Curry. He may play basketball, too, Billy. Man. Ten seconds coming up here. Got two seconds. Oh, 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 somehow. Nice back to Sims and two. Boy, that came close to 10. With Delt going up in the air and tapping it backwards, yeah, that clock is still on until you get it over half court. Unconventional way, to say the least, of yep. beating the press. Get McCarty posting up. Sims fights to get position and shut that one off. There's a switch. Nobody's on McCarty. How about Delt? Wide open three. He has a funny rotation on that jump shot, but he can bury him. It is a side spin indeed. Wheat. Oh. The ball and the feet have to go over. Walker. Another scoring easy basket, but again, the pace accelerated. 44-32 Kentucky. And one of the things that uh, Samaki Walker's done a good job, remember he picked up those two quick fouls in the first half, hasn't gotten that third one yet. Well, there's number three on Rodgers. We have figure skating coming up after our game. Northwest Airlines Christmas on ice. Chance to see Nancy Kerrigan and Dorothy Hamill. That's all coming up on the CBS Sports Show. Sim sits down and basically doesn't even get a chance to sit down. Denny Crum talks to him while he's standing. Good hands by Walker. Walker 
pressure on the block. The pass. Yeah, snappy passing. Week three. And when he fires that ball, you've got to be ready to shoot the jumper before you catch it. Turnover. Delk uh, right between two cats. Pretty good hands by Patino, and then behind the back pass by Patino. Classy little guard at Massachusetts. I think that's an interesting story where he was willing to put up the money to help make the difference between Calipari going there or not. Now Calipari's number one in the nation. Knocked his club off and uh, maybe fighting each other for a challenge to the Final Four. Walker back at a minute. Quick, quick, got to throw it quick. Oh, a charge called on Walker. That's his third. Jim, what he's got to do is when he catches the ball, just throw it opposite as soon as he touches it. There'll be guys open for wide open jump shots, and the guy you like to have over there is Luke. Broke a record for Louisville last year with three point shooting. He hit one today just before the half. Good pass in there. And another assist to Walker. And you notice with good screening, they get a big man on a little man. Louisville trying to switch all the time. Telegraph pass, cross court yeah. under the other team's basket. Not a good idea. There's the passing inside. You see who was on him? Flynn. So he's got him by five inches. Long pass. Technical there. You can look for it in the first half, Billy, and it's on Antoine Walker. And it should have been called in the first half. There was a warning when there shouldn't have been. But this time, he reached over the line, touched the ball, and it's a technical. You've got to keep your hands up and not reach over that line, touch that ball. Now, if the man throwing the ball in bounds, Jim, holds it out for you to touch it, then it's not a technical. But in that particular case, Walker's the one that initiated the contact. So Wheat. Jim, we talked about that. We'll see the play right now. Walker over the line. John Clockety, the referee, calls the technical. So uh, he makes them both, and Louisville with possession at midcourt. Kentucky by 12. Jim, we talked about that, that Temple win last night. Had Jarrett Hass on the foul line with two foul shots, eight seconds to go, misses the pair. It's high score. Thing went into overtime. Temple won in overtime. We warming up now. That reduces it to 10. And it's been a half-court game for Louisville. Doing exactly what Denny Crum wants here. Walker drive. Got the roll. Oh, nice idea because Tamaki Walker was guarding. He's got those three. Tip. Last touch by Paul. Epps he took a nasty fall. He sure did. It's a timeout on the floor. We'll be right back. Anthony Epps, number 25 of Kentucky, injuring his left ankle on this play just before the break. Got caught here under Flynn and already grimacing. But he was able to walk to the Kentucky bench. And that foot uh, getting some treatment right now. Jimmy's had an excellent basketball game. Really kept Kentucky in the game in the first half. 11 points, 4 rebounds, 4 steals. I'd say that's solid. Kentucky 48-36, 15 and a half remaining. Delk. Posted up Flynn. Dell starting to really rack up the points. 17. He didn't get on track till late in the half. First half. Nobody coming back to the ball. Boy, that's a dangerous pass. So soft. Three-pointer Rogers. Delk with the rebound. He's got those long arms, but for a guard, he can really go up. There's a hold on Wheat. Near the conclusion of this game, Billy and I will be selecting a genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. 
To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost five and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Jim, when you're a team like Louisville that likes to switch a lot, and you're playing against a key team like Kentucky that likes to have a lot of rotations, a lot of back screens, you get caught in a lot of mismatches, and that's what happened to Wheat that time. He's down inside. And, and has no chance to defend in there. Walker with a big swat. Allen Edwards, number three, has come in for Kentucky. We had it not lose by Wayne Turner, freshman from Boston. Here's Edwards. Now Turner. And Dell top the key. Oh, you could see McCarty flying through. It was just waiting for him to pluck it and drive it home. He had about an 18-foot head start. Came right down the lane. Wildcats with their largest lead. Sims. Party commits at the other end. See how how much room McCarty had to come down. Here he comes. Here he comes. See ya. Nobody blocking him out. Look at him. He came from about the top of the key, almost a three-point line, with a clear shot to dunk that. The wide open lane. McCarty comes out. Hope replaces him. McCarty again uh, got to start today. Uh, Coach Patino has been wanting him to gain weight. He was down around 220 and he's been trying to get him up to 230. So I won't start you till you get to 230. He's been on an 8,000 calorie a day diet. Sam Newton told us a good story yesterday when we were kidding about the fact that who is the guy that weighs McCarty and he said it was Patino. So you know, you know how that can go. And he said that's the way uh, Coach Rupp used to be in regard to picking the captains. And people asked him, Coach Rupp, do the players actually pick the captains? He said they absolutely do. He said, but then I count the votes. So you know, <laughs> I kind of kind of make a parallel there. They vote on them, but I count them. Yep. And I'm sure Coach Patino is the one reading the scales. That's right. right. He says he's wanting to to gain weight to help him uh, for an NBA career. Dantzler uh, reaching around on that one. Well, when you think, uh, Jim, about guys that have coached on both levels successfully, you've got Larry Brown and Rick Pitino probably the head of the list there, the guys that have been able to make that transition from college to pro or pro to college and do it successfully. Tony has been to Final Four. 22nd timeout by Louisville. And next Saturday, North Carolina against Texas here on CBS, 4 o'clock Eastern time. Jeff McInnes directing that North Carolina attack. Reggie Freeman has really been putting up some big numbers for the Longhorns. Jim, we talk about uh, coaches. Of course, I think North Carolina surprised this year in every respect except Dean Smith is still coaching him. I, I saw where he flew out to California last week, one day out and back to make sure he was there when James Worthy was honored for the retiring of his jersey at uh, uh, for the Los Angeles Lakers. And that's the way he's been with his players uh, since day one. Like earlier this week, he had Carolina playing at Pitt so Dante Calabria could get a game back in his hometown. Backcourt violation over and back. Patino is livid in the fact that he says the ball was touched and tapped, and he's saying to the referees, what are you looking at? And he's absolutely correct. did not gain possession but they did hit the ball you see right there there's the tap by Lou. Well, you know that didn't look like it was touched yeah he tapped it that's what sent it back into the back court Turner has the right to retrieve it man opposite Sim oh, posting up Walker Fighting for it, gets the two. Walker's asking for the foul in there. He's got such good hands down low. Edwards snaps it. Walker hacked by, will they call it on that, Sims? That'll be, that'll be on Sims. It's on Sims. Now, now watch this closely, Billy. All right. Is the ball touched by Sims here? No. Nope. He never did touch it. Jimmy, you got me. You're all over it. And that referee is absolutely correct as well. And Rick Pitino and I were out to lunch on that one. Well, you know, it, it was so deceiving. It really looked like a... No, no, wait, don't jump back. Uh, you, you were all half. over it. Sims committing I his third. <laughs> <laughs> you killed me. Right, well. <laughs> and Pitino still argued yeah. over it. Hey, Rick, come on over and look at our monitors, and you'll find out that Jim Nance and that official were all over that ball. Out, 
Boy, Delk has really picked up, Jim, in this game, not only with his scoring, but just his intensity for the game. He didn't hit early in the game, but he's showing some real leadership now. 53-39 Kentucky, 13-20 remaining. Here's Delk. Red hot. Mr. Mr. Basketball, two years in a row in Tennessee. And he's going to be Mr. Basketball here in Kentucky for this ballpark. Sims Dunn. ahead, yep. Wow. Tate, does he go powerfully to the basket or not? I mean, he's got to be, what did you say, 220 pounds? You know, last year yep. was given an ultimatum to lose weight by Coach Crum, and uh, Louisville will get the ball back here. This call goes against Antoine Walker. And that's his second. You notice nobody goes to challenge Sims when he gets those angles to the basket. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like a fullback. You know, he's now in double figures for the 10th time in 11 games yep. this year. And his career coming into this year, he had only eight double-figure games. Wheat, that's where he's top. That's been there all day. If they'll throw the ball opposite, Wheat will start hitting those. He's too good a shooter to miss. On the line. That was about the only play, though, that Walker could make. Try to put that ball behind his back. Jeff Shepard comes back in. Kentucky, be interesting to see you know, the situation with Epps. He's got uh, the sneakers back on, and uh, you know, let's hope that's not a, any kind of serious injury. Well, Kentucky's depth allows them not to have to put him in the game, but in another respect, you'd like to put him back in to see if he can run on it at all, as opposed to just sitting over there, letting it tighten up on him. There's the feed. Two guys wide open on the side. Yep, weak three. They need it. Can't hit the open shot now. Edwards getting his hands on a couple of balls here since he came into the ball game. Ah. Walker looking for an outlet. Yeah, but wisely doesn't go for it. He can handle the ball. Rogers. Five hope. Tie up situation. Arrow to Louisville. So it'll be Louisville ball. Timeout on the floor. CBS Sports coverage continues after this message and a word from your local station. College football coming back to CBS on Friday with the Sun Bowl from El Paso. Iowa will take on the co-champions from the Pac-10, the Washington Huskies. Cedric Shaw. Great runner for... Iowa, you Jim. are the quarterback from Washington. We'll be there. Jim, you'll be also with another football game over the holidays. It'll be kind of interesting. Yeah, huh? January 2nd, Fiesta Bowl. Joining our Cotton Bowl, Orange Bowl lineup also here on CBS. Kentucky play a little zone now. There's that double team on Walker. Walker turned it over. You know, a player has to realize what they're doing to him. And in this particular case, although Walker would like to go ahead and reverse and get maybe in the low post a little bit, he's got to understand he's being double teamed. They're coming from the weak side. He has got to go ahead and just catch it and throw it out. Walker with five turnovers today, double teamed all afternoon. Edwards three. Nice block out that time by Pope Edwards had some solid minutes off the bench. Alan Edwards, sophomore from Miami and a basketball family. Doug and Steve, his brothers, one at Florida, played at Florida State, now in the pros. The other at Miami, where they were upset, in my mind, today by Clemson, another team that's undefeated. Clemson beat them down there at Miami yep. in overtime. Good win. That Shepard is holding up Rodgers, trying to cut through. That's and only the third team foul of the half against Kentucky. <laughs> and there's Rogers finally gets the call he wants and, and starts hollering at the referee that he's been doing it all along. And then the referee starts telling him that he's got a problem. Is he going to call this both ways? This is first team's third for Hugh Bell. The foul was on. Yeah, they did. Huh? I thought the foul was called on Shepard. They called, they called a double foul, Billy. How about that? And that's the fourth on Rodgers. And uh, no conversation from Rodgers after that call. Yeah. 
Hope outside looking for one of those back picks to get the mix, the mismatch for the guard. And they got it. They're killing them on the glass, offensive end especially. There's the case again. Wheat gets caught down inside with, with Walker. Sims showing some good hands that time. Rogers was a little ticked with that last ball. <laughs> Uh, he, he acted a little better. He got away with it. 60-41. Kentucky's largest lead. Walker, soft shot, but gets a second chance. A good hands, good quickness back to the rebound. Walker again saying, I'm being fouled down inside. 13 points, 8 rebounds. 5 turnovers. If he's not careful, he might have another triple-double. Not the one you want. Last year it was rebounds, points, and block shots. Notice that Pope respected him, though. He didn't put that ball up. Nice defense by Walker. Walker doing it up at that end. Pull up three. Wheat. Jim, that's the first time today that Wheat's been able to go right at the basket. Remember earlier he was up with a fadeaway jumper. Kentucky. Kentucky wants to talk things over. Well, they had the lead at 19 a moment ago, but still a 14-point bulge for the Wildcats. Here's a complete look at the bowl lineup on CBS Iowa and Washington. Kicks it off Friday, Sun Bowl, then the Cotton Bowl on New Year's Day. Oregon and Colorado. New Year's night, Orange Bowl. Florida State and Notre Dame. And then January 2nd, Florida and Nebraska. One against two for the national championship from the... Tostitos Fiesta Bowl right here on CBS. Danny Werfel, Tommy Frazier, Nebraska having arrived at Tempe, ready to go. Well, what a shootout that'll be. Look who's back in the game, Billy. Great news. Epps back in the ball game. You can see that he's been taped up. Posted up down inside on the smallest player ever to play for Denny Crum. Charlie Taylor, number 11. Right. Schiffer. Will Smith. Pulling down the rebound. Boy, I'd stay clear of Smith. He'll throw some wicked elbows out there. And Shepard will lose one. Epson Taylor. Kentucky prevents guys from cutting through. And there's Shepard committed two fouls. Gets called for the second one. You see, here he comes through. Tries to run through the screen. Now, obviously, that's not going to work. And he sits down on that one. Smith pretty good, uh, you know, going after that That's Lawrence Olivier <laughs> award. <laughs> right, he got it, remember, in the first half. No in the call. beginning of the game, yeah. no call. 8.50 remaining, Kentucky by 14. Inbounds to Sims, rejection by Walker. Edwards out on the break. Edwards has hit one already. A little strong with that one. Taylor pushes it up ahead. Now Wheat oh. with the left hand. Beautiful drive, little hesitation, dribble, and palmed it. Look out. Sims again. Paul Block will go to the line. Louisville has scored seven unanswered and a chance to trim it to ten. Well, two free throws. Kentucky known for their tremendous runs, and here Louisville making one when this game really should be put away. And Epps, how about that? Got hurt, he came back into the ball game, mm. gave up his body again. You like to see that. Ron Mercer returning. This is Mercer's first uh, run of the second half, isn't it? He was in the, for the lineup at the very head of the uh, second half. Tried a shot run underneath the basket. Right. It's kind of interesting. You've got uh, four players on the Louisville team play more minutes per game than anybody plays on the Kentucky team. Antoine Walker, uh, the most minutes played, he's right in the about 24 per game. Spreading that time around. Sims with 18. In my opinion, if Kentucky is to win the national championship, Jim, they will have to get down to an eight-man rotation by March. It's hard to win six games in a row when you've got so many multiple substitutions. And that one game can get away from you before you get an opportunity to settle down on who are the guys for that particular day. Look at Sims breaking through with the steal. And another... 
Sims. Down to nine. A great game by Sims. This is a 10-point run by the Louisville Cardinals. It's down to nine. They're doing it without Walker in the game. Epps in the lane. Epps gets it back. And Smith falls down on him. Send him to the line. Got to bring Samaki Walker back in the game. 7.41 to go. You're making a nice run. See if Denny Crum does. He's got Rodgers on here. Here he comes in the ball game right now. He's talking about Kentucky needing a pair of the, the playing time maybe to, to eight players. They had another man in the rotation that gave him 11. In fact, one time they had 11 players averaging double-figure minutes. Right. But Jared Prickett, who played in five games this season, is now going to try to get a medical redshirt, come back next year to play his senior year. Now, they've approved the medical redshirt status. A player cannot play more than 20% of the scheduled games and still get a medical redshirt. He's under that, so they applied, and, and it was accepted. Knee operation he had last summer. The doctors feel that... Uh, who qualified for the red, medical red show. One of two by Epps, 10-point Kentucky lead. Taylor picks up his dribble. Kaiser back to help. Now Weed ahead to Walker. This is the first time today that we have two big guys in the ball game for Louisville, but Sims is out of the game. Smith and Walker playing a double low post. Peter Sims needing just to catch his breath. Wheat three. Oh, wow, over Epps from long range. Down to seven. Jim, that angle, what did that shot remind you of? Arkansas over Scotty land. Thurman. Thurman. Scotty Thurman over land. I, I was shocked when I saw him putting it up. Yeah. Well, he had the angle on it. It looked good. here all the way. Reminded me of that shot in the final four, just right on the angle. Big possession here from Kentucky and Edwards with two. Megan Walker with two men on him scores. Nice post up move. That's what a better job Louisville's doing in this half. Is just relaxing, getting that ball up the court. Not getting in that one game. Oh, there's a turnover though. Travel. They slipped a little. Here we go, Scotty Thurman. Lang charges him. Great arc. Nothing but two. Three. <laughs> no. Oh, that was down for a moment. He'll shoot a couple. Denny Crum's going to have to get a little bigger lineup out here. Again, we got a situation where Charlie Taylor and his size put two tiny guys in the backcourt. Kentucky taking advantage of that. Sims returns for Bozak Smith. Tony Delk at the line, and today starting his 74th straight game. It all started. We were here for it. For a season opener, Kentucky Louisville in uh, early season the 93-94 season. All right, he had a 20-point game there. He's twice been named the player of the game in this uh, Kentucky Louisville series. So in four years, that's not bad. He's got a chance here today, but I would imagine, you know, Epps is going to get a lot of votes in that respect. Oh boy, tough pass. Well, as I said, you've got two small guys in the backcourt. Taylor, if he doesn't have the ball in his hands, is no factor because you can't see him to throw the ball to him. McCarty, well, a 19-point lead was cut into down to seven. Now it's 13, just like that. Wheat sees Delk hit the floor, and he races into the front court. Kaiser, corner three. Three wants to shoot from. Got 98 threes in his career now. Four threes. Find many players like that. And Sims to the reach over the top, committing his fourth. Now he's had an outstanding game, and then Walker's going to sit down. Smokey Walker's going to sit down again. You wonder if maybe he's out of breath. With 544 to go, he's uh, going to have to rest tomorrow, not now. If Louisville's going to have any chance at all. Two shots, man. Two shots Antoine for Antoine Walker. Top four from Chicago at 24 against Indiana. He was 
10 of 12 from the field in that game. His only two misses were from three-point range. In fact, he got an early season talking to by Coach Patino about trying to improve his shot selection. He told him that great scores go inside. Jump shooters have to pray for an on night. Walker's really done damage inside here today. He really has. He's had 10 rebounds, too, which ties a career high. And I think his decision-making this game for that game, too, Jim. Taking the right kind of shot. Denny Crum talked with Samaki Walker over there. Walker never did go to the bench. McCarty off the tweet. Kentucky ball. McCarty did the right thing. He realized he was going for the score. But when he saw how difficult it was, he concentrated on the catch instead of worrying about the basket. You see the long pass here. Now he thinks he's got a chance for a breakaway, but he concentrated right on getting his hands on that ball and then throwing it back in bounds. A little separation for a moment before yep. the inbound it. Considering the rivalry between these two and, and, and how much pressure there is on playing all Louisville Kentucky games, I think these kids have handled themselves pretty well in this game. You know what? They know each other. A lot of them went to yep. opposing high schools. They go back a long way, maybe even the playground days when they were kids coming along. Juan Wheat and Derek Anderson certainly do. There's Mercer. Mercer just not being comfortable offensively, is he? Not really in a flow. Things just aren't instinct to get for the freshman. That's a reach-in foul right there. Now, it could be on either Mercer or Delk. Both slap pretty hard. But when Sims gets his hands on the ball, no sense trying to slap him on the arm. There's Mercer's second. And that's Kentucky's sixth. They'll be shooting one and one on the next one. 11-point difference with just under five minutes remaining. There's still room for a break now. What happened here is that there was no basket score. So you can't, move, right, you can't move on the end line. A mental turnover for Louisville, and, uh, and that hurts them. If you're trying to come back, you can't do that. That's the 21st turnover for Louisville today. Mark Pope in for Antoine Walker. Kaiser netted himself, slaps his hand, said, what are you thinking about? the defender and buries another three. 24 now for Delft. And that's when a guy so dangerous he can go on you the drive or he can pull it back for the jumper. Delft can do both, so you got to respect it. Sim still almost unstoppable on the dribble drive, and he'll go to the line for two. I haven't seen anybody play any harder than Sims is playing right out here now. He's giving it all for his team. 441 remaining. We listened to a little lecture last night, Jim. Said that the Lord gives you so much, and what he gives you, you got to take advantage of it, make the best you can. And I'd have to say this young man has done it today. Huh? He's dedicated the season, Billy, to his father, who passed away this summer. He'd be proud of his son today. 71-58, Kentucky. 4:35 remaining. Again, the great score. How about that little shake and bake? Yep. Able to free himself with it. Walker touched it last. Even though Delt did not hit his shots early on, I mean, he has become such an offensive force in this game. One of the most dangerous and explosive guys offensively in the country. They're all going in now. 26. Plus one. And Walker finally gets the shot and the foul. Jim, I have to look ahead a little bit. You start thinking about uh, Kentucky and the SEC this year. You know, Arkansas still there to be uh, to contend with, but Georgia being coached now by Tubby Smith, who is a former assistant with Rick Pitino, having a very solid start on the year. Mississippi State that we knew last year was a solid club. He turned most of their arsenal uh, playing extremely well. 
So the league, uh, a little different. Vandy has had some uh, excellent ball games early on this year. He beat UCLA. Yep. Tony Delft missed his first six shots today. He's made nine of his last ten. McCarty. Underneath, Matthew Walker smacked by Derek Anderson. What Samaki wanted was the lob so he could go right for the dunk that time. We'll see it here. Walker going up, doing a good job that time on Walker, his counterpart, but you can't handle McCarty when there's no block out. Second time today, McCarty's finished one with an awesome dunk because nobody put a body on him. One area of the game that Walker does not excel, free throw shooting, only shooting 47%. But has a nice looking release to be down under 50. 16 points, eight rebounds. He's got four blocks. Four blocks. Time now, 334 remaining. Kentucky's lead 13 at Rupp Arena. Kentucky leading 75-62, Jim Nance and Billy Packer, and it seems every year we attend the practice and we look at one another and say, you know what, this is going to be a, a team that will be in the Final Four, and yesterday while we're watching Kentucky practice, we that we both agreed that uh, this, th this team should be there. I think so, Jim. It's uh, obviously we talked about their depth. Uh, I think they have to get down to a rotation, like I said before, of uh, eight guys that are going to play, but they certainly have a lot to pick from. They've got senior leadership, they've got strength out here, mature players. A lot of other people in the country have really fine teams, but you don't see that kind of maturity. Kansas would be an example. You know, they're really not seniors and juniors, it's sophomore and freshman late in the ball club. Louisville touched it last. And of course, when you start talking about dominating teams in the United States, uh, with guys that leave early to go out in the pros, it's very difficult to create a dominating situation. Let's take like a North Carolina. Could you imagine oh. what they'd be like with Rasheed Wallace and Jerry Stackhouse? But that probably isn't going to happen for a while in college basketball. Off balance. Great rebound. Boy, McCarty went right into traffic to get that one. Oh. Got to give him the Chevy MVP now, don't you think? That's three years out of four in college in the Louisville, Kentucky game, and he'll be the MVP from his side of the bargain. We said he can do it all. The outside jumper, which he holds the records of Kentucky, and then ability to penetrate and create. It reminds me a lot of Isaiah Thomas in that respect. You know, as, as a college performer, he doesn't, he can't make the plays like Isaiah did, but you know, he can go to the basket and shoot the jumper outside. He's got the strength and quickness. Had a technical delay and I didn't see it. You know, again, it was another violation on the inbounds pass now. Coming over the lane. Yeah. Coming over the line, rather. And Antoine Walker again. So, weak. Drops them both again. And a reminder, the CBS Sports Show will follow Northwest Airlines Christmas on Ice. Dorothy Hamill and Nancy Kerrigan. And with a three, Louisville, as crazy as this can seem, will get it down to ten again. Kentucky cannot put them away. They have a three, they've got to go inside and opposite. Kentucky in a tough man-to-man -man here. Walker on Walker. That's pretty good block. I think he got all ball there. It's a party. But that's a foul. Big time foul. Yep. Yeah. Walker buries the baseline. That's the one change in the rules. And Sims for another dunk. 
And Rick Bettino has got to be really upset to think, how are people throwing the long one against him? That's what, the third or fourth one today? I think that's five dunks for Sims, and I'm sure they don't have records, but that might be a rough arena opponent record for number of dunks in a game. That was yeah, a that foul on Taylor. But you just, you know, you can press like Kentucky, but you cannot allow that long pass, and it, and it shouldn't really happen to a club like this. Let's give uh, Sims the MVP, Chevy MVP award from the Louisville side. He's just reached a new career high with 23. As you said, Jim, all but one game this year in double figures. And when you think back at this young guy, when we first saw him, you never would have envisioned a starting role at Louisville, much less a starring role. He's really getting it done. You know, it really is a Louisville team that you had Sanders and Osborne would be extremely dangerous. It certainly would. If you got the bodies away, good players away. Plus Eric Johnson, who's out with yep. the injury. You know, this is a team and could have them all back next year. Be an explosive ball club. Charlie Taylor will take a three. There's yeah. Dell. Wisely, Kentucky using a little clock here. 120 remaining. Jim, we talked about around the country. How about, you know, Louisville in a conference with Cincinnati and Memphis? And someday, next year, sometime next year, Houston will join as well. Conference USA, Houston will join. In fact, the same division as Louisville will join Memphis, UNC Charlotte, Louisville. The genuine Chevrolet players of the game, here you go. Alvin Sims with a new career high, 23. Tony Delk, 28. He's just three off his career high. Celebrating his 25th year of NCAA sponsorship, Chevrolet donates $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Walker becoming a big-time scorer with this club, solidly entrenched now in that starting lineup, getting it done. Walker and McCarty remind me of... Uh, of, of each other and the way they play i think they're very similar kentucky goes would you agree one three one zone then you he take to 20. i don't know about that i think they have different skills different styles all right time out on the floor the crowd doesn't like it 17 point kentucky lead CBS Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Tostitos Tortilla Chips. You got Tostitos, you got a party. And by MCI's Friends and Family. You get friends and family, you get savings. Simple. So, Louisville comes out of a timeout. Timeout, the Cardinals call. Walter McCarty needs one rebound for a double-double. Uh, Kentucky shows zone, but they're actually in the man. Let's see. One minute left in the game. Derek Anderson gives it up. Delk. Yeah, he may have a chance to get a career high. He's uh, three behind it right now. The total, 28. He had 31 one time. Did Anderson show you some explosive quickness on that move? He did a, a, a play this year. Back to McCarty on a fast break where he threw it up on the board for McCarty to come down the lane and dunk. I guess he figured Delk would just make up his own play without putting it on the board. <laughs> They've got a quick threesome out there right now in Epps, Anderson, and Delk. Delk with 30. Let's check this defense out. They show a 2-3 zone. Let's see what happens when men cut. Kaiser. He likes that shot. Nice pass. A smart play that time by Walker. Let's see him give it to Delk. See if Delk can get a new career high. Let the clock wind down. They're going to have to give it up. About seven seconds differential here. Louisville will drop to seven and four. Kentucky will climb to seven and one. Anderson. Oh, dazzling move to put things away. Sims with the ball last and tries to take it in. Here's Doug. Again. 
Put the exclamation point on it. Kentucky avenging Louisville's win on New Year's Day of 95. It's Kentucky by 23.